Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm Darren McBreen. It is Thursday, May 14th, 2015. Here's a quick look what's coming up. Tonight, troops train to subdue citizens inside an internment camp. Then, DHS is caught busing in more illegal immigrants and the lies of the NSA. That's next on the InfoWars Nightly News. And the public are a bunch of sheep thinking this is to protect them from terrorists. Terroristas, give me a break. We have shocking video this evening from a recent U.S. Marines training drill in Yuma, Arizona, where it shows armed troops chasing down American citizens in a mock internment camp, this during a martial law style scenario. The exercise, which involved U.S. Marines from the 1st Battalion, 5th Marine Regiment, 1st Marine Division, well, it took place on April 18th and revolved around assault support tactics training. The video shows Marines landing in a helicopter on a field next to a busy highway. Local citizens can be seen watching the exercise over a chain link fence while role players take part in the drill. And by the way, these exercises are happening all across the country right now, and Jade Helm hasn't even started yet. One of the role players, you can see him right here, he tries to escape the compound and is chased down and handcuffed by an armed Marine. And you can even hear the role players shouting things out like, let me out, because, well, it looks like they are training to put Americans in internment camps. And if these drills are supposed to be for urban warfare in the Middle East, like the U.S. military claims, then why do the role players always shout things out like, I'm a sovereign citizen, I have my rights, or don't take my guns? I mean, that's the routine, that's what we're seeing from these drills. And why are they building mock cities like, like they did at Fort AP Hill in Virginia, where the street signs are clearly in English, and they resemble an average American town. And don't forget, it was Alex Jones who went to a drill in California. This was several years ago. And he captured a video of the U.S. military processing American citizens into an internment camp. As the voice over the loudspeaker, well, you can hear him shouting, we will not tolerate civil disobedience. Attention, attention, attention. American forces are here to help. Remain calm. We will not tolerate civil disobedience. Now, if this was practice for the Middle East, you'd think they'd say something like, we will not tolerate civil disobedience in Arabic. I mean, I mean, wouldn't they? So as you can see, these drills have been occurring for a very long time, but there's no doubt that they are accelerating at a rapid pace right now as the U.S. military well, it looks like they are training for martial law. And we all know that Jade Helm is coming in July, and that is a nationwide military exercise where troops will operate undercover amongst local populations. But we're not supposed to question any of that. And like Rick Perry said, the former governor of Texas, he said the other day, it's okay to question the federal government, but it's not okay to question the military. I don't think there's a problem to uh, question your, your government. I do it on a regular basis, uh, and, I, and I think that's a healthy thing to question your government. I don't think it's particularly healthy uh, to question the military. I mean, who, who does he think is in charge of the U.S. military to begin with? And check this out. I have a right here in my hands a U.S. Army training manual for civil disturbance operations where it outlines how the military will be used domestically to control riots and confiscate firearms and even kill American citizens if they have to right here on U.S. soil. This during civil unrest. Warning shots will not be fired is quoted in the PDF document. You can see it for yourself. Just Google search. Army manual outlines plan to kill rioters and demonstrators in America. It is posted on Infowars.com in an article by Paul Joseph Watson with links to the actual documents. 
So read it for yourself. Meanwhile, earlier today on the Alex Jones Show, nationally syndicated radio broadcast, Alex had this to say about the escalation in military drills across the country. Infowars.com alarming video footage from U.S. Marines training drill, which took place in Arizona last month shows armed troops chasing down unruly citizens inside a mock internment camp while role players chant for food and water. Now, we're, before we get to that, let's play from a month ago, right around the same time in California next door, the Army National Guard training to take on sovereign citizens. And when the sovereign citizen says, I have rights, I'm a sovereign citizen, that's when they attack with their batons. So let's play that clip, then we'll play the new clip. But if you're a radio listener, you got to see this footage Infowars.com forward slash show. We're streaming it live. Uh, but let's go to the previous clip. Here it is. I'm a sovereign citizen. I refuse to recognize you guys. Okay. Now let's go to, and we've got the, we've got other troops saying it, and we've got police saying, what's the armored vehicle for? The, you know, it's for the Patriots, it's for the veterans, it's for the constitutionalists. Should I play all those again and show you 25 articles? I got a whole stack of mainstream news right here. I had them reprint them for when the media guy came in. The Boston Globe was like, here, here, here's, here's dozens of mainstream articles admitting they're training to fight the American people and gun owners. Here, here, here. This is for the Boston Globe. But see, their editors don't want me to show you the man behind the curtain. They don't want me to go, here, here's the proof, jackass. Here it is right here. They want to just go, liar, hates the military, racist, Boston bomber. I mean, you know, it just doesn't work anymore. There's a massive gear up for martial law, and they won't call it martial law. They'll call it civil. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's hear this guy in Indiana, the sheriff's department. Let's hear him one more time talk about who this is for. Then we'll get to the new video and audio uh, that the Marines uh, basically shot themselves and have released. Uh, I mean, uh, this is not even hidden. They're training for it, but then saying they're not. Let's uh, go to the clip from Indiana. We didn't have the the violence that we see today. Um, the weaponry is totally different now than it was in, in my, the beginning of my career. Not true. Um, plus, you have a lot of people that are coming out of the military that have the ability and the knowledge to to build IEDs and and to defeat law enforcement techniques. Kill us, kill us. Okay, can we can we kill the Spokane SWAT team commander, uh, Washington? saying it's for the constitutionals who have guns. Can we just keep doing this for everybody? While, while Fox News sits there and says, none of this is happening. No, none of it. Alex Jones. Is directing fire toward the team that's trying to get in. They safely can, they can pull right up to a front. I don't take enemy fire and still try to address a threat without being fear of getting shot. So I'm thinking that is totally appropriate in Iraq, but where, what kind of a situation in the U.S. would you see that happening? I mean, we've got a lot of constitutionalists and a lot of people that, that stockpile weapons, a lot of, a lot of ammunition. I mean, we've got a lot of constitutionalists and a lot of people that, that stockpile weapons, a lot of, a lot of ammunition. They have, okay. But again, none of this is going on. We're going under global treaties. Our borders are wide open. We're living in a globalist dictatorship. We're smart enough to try to politically take the country back. We're gearing up to defend ourselves as the military trains to attack us. We need to get the police to understand to protect themselves. They need to say no to this narrative and not have the civil war. So while the U.S. military is busy training for martial law, the Department of Homeland Security is busy bringing in busloads of immigrants from the Mexican border. Now, we know that the U.S. government is bringing in 100,000 Muslims every year through the United Nations refugee program and various visa programs, but new reports indicate a pipeline has been established through the southern border with help from the good old DHS, whose job it is, by the way, to protect the homeland. But they've been caught red-handed once again, this time with a busload of illegals from Somalia, as captured here by cell phone video by concerned citizens in California. It's about 10.30 at night, Pacific Standard Time, May 7th. Right pulls up next to our gas station is a Homeland Security bus. Windows are covered. Are you guys taking um, illegals in there? Is there illegals? No, we ended up taking some people to a detention facility. Oh, detention. Somalis and all the Africans. Oh, wow. A detention center up over here? Yeah. 
Is that because they're they cross the border? Well, they're coming in asking for asylum. That's what it is. Uh, uh, the special yeah. keyword, huh? That's uh, that's a password. That's now. what the password is now. Wow. Okay. Remember now, the DHS is bringing all these illegals in. And we got this from World Net Daily. They report that Somalia is the home base of Al-Shabaab. This is a terrorist organization that slaughtered 147 Christians in Kenya last month. They executed 67 Christians, you remember, at the Westgate Mall in Kenya a couple of years ago. And they say that they want to target malls in the U.S. So let's just hope that none of these terrorists are on board one of these DHS buses bound for California. I mean, it looks pretty risky if you ask me. And if you think I'm being paranoid, you should listen to what the Texas Border Patrol volunteers have to say about all this. John Bound caught up with them not too long ago and interviewed them. They are saying that what they've encountered, the 80% of the illegal immigrants that they've encountered are what they call OTMs, other than Mexican. And these guys are coming in from places like Somalia, Pakistan, Afghanistan, Iran, and even Syria. And they've got some um, amazing stories to tell. These Border Patrol uh, volunteers have some amazing stories to tell. They are finding things like Muslim prayer rugs, Arabic to English translation books, and even Iranian cash right there on the U.S.-Mexico border. Uh, prior to last night, uh, they were, it was running about 73% of the people apprehended in the Rio Grande Valley or OTMs other than Mexican. Um, a lot of Central Americans, but really from all over the, the world. And uh, we were informed last night that that number has escalated to 80%. So, uh, and this is, this is a fact. So most of the people that we encounter here a larger percentage of them are people from other other countries other than Mexico. And we're not told about the special interest aliens. Uh, we have had Somalians here once they got on that special uh, uh, alien list. Uh, they won't tell us that anymore, but there have been some Somalians, India, Sri Lanka, Nepal, Chinese, uh, you name it, we've had it here. <laughs> we've also... Uh, uh, found evidence that people from these uh, special interest countries, in particular Pakistan and Afghanistan, Iran, um, uh, are coming through our property. Uh, during one of our Texas border volunteer operations last year, uh, we had a group of 10. Uh, we spotted, uh, we followed them, uh, informed the Border Patrol where they were going to come out on the highway. Border Patrol were not able to respond fast enough. They, got, they climbed the fence and uh, uh, loaded up and, and left and uh, were, were not caught. But as one of them was uh, climbing over the fence, he dropped uh, a package. And that package uh, was an Urdu dictionary. Urdu is a language uh, spoken in uh, Pakistan and Afghanistan. And in that uh, uh, translation book, Urdu and English, there were a lot of phrases circled and outlined. Do you speak Spanish? Do you speak English? So it's, it's easier for them to slip through this private property. And uh, that's just one example. And uh, more recently, uh, uh, within the past two weeks, some Iranian money was found in a bailout vehicle. So we know they're coming in here. On May 7th, the lawsuit ACLU versus James Clapper, the director of national intelligence, was decided. A three-judge panel for the Second Circuit held that the telephone metadata program exceeds the scope of what Congress has authorized and therefore violates Section 215 of the Patriot Act. Does the NSA collect any type of data at all on millions or hundreds of millions of Americans? No, sir. It does not. Not wittingly. There are cases where they could in inadvertently, perhaps, uh, collect, but not, not wittingly. James Clapper's attorney, Robert Litt, claimed that he wasn't lying when he wrongly told Congress in 2013 that the government does not wittingly collect information about millions of Americans. He just forgot. This was an untruth or a falsehood. This was just a mistake on his part, Robert Litt said. We all make mistakes. The ruling sends the case back 
to the district court for further proceedings. If past practice is any lesson, Congress will wait until the spying program is about to expire and then in a panic to frighten the American people into accepting more intrusions on their privacy. Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell has already put forth a new bill as a stopgap measure to allow time for a fuller debate on the issue. His stopgap? A five-year reauthorization with no changes to the current program. Section 215 of the Conspicuously Subversive Patriot Act, commonly referred to as the Library Records Provision. 215 allows the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act, as applied by the director of the FBI or an official designated by the director, access to tangible things deemed under investigation. This investigation must be conducted in accordance under the guidelines laid out in Executive Order 12333 and must not be carried out on citizens whose activities are protected by the First Amendment. All orders must be granted by a FISA court judge. This breach of trust by the federal government was exposed by whistleblowers and undermined by the intelligence community on a massive scale. Uh, I made the statement about that uh, the greatest threat to our uh constitutional form of government since the Civil War is what's happening now in terms of spying in the United States. And that's the domestic spying program Stellar Wind that they started in secret and have been running in secret. Uh, so they're violating the constitutional rights of everyone. Uh, First Amendment rights that are violated because they, uh, you have the right under the First Amendment to have a free, free association. It doesn't say you have the right to free association as long as the government knows about it. That's, that's a direct violation of that one. Meanwhile, the mouthpieces of the American counter-terror movement project the PSYOP needed for the unconstitutional legislation. Expect to see more blatant extortion thrown at the feet of the American people. Threats like these will increase as the scrutiny of unconstitutional surveillance grows. Is the U.S. the new front line in the fight against ISIS? Well, we're certainly vulnerable, and this is all part of ISIS's strategy of conveying a winner's message. The motive is, let them attack, have the mainstream media never point out that our own governments funded them, created them, protected them, and allow them to attack, and then bet your bottom dollar we're going to be attacked when more attacks happen, Paul, uh, for pointing out that our government allowed it to happen bare minimum. Here's a tweet. Americans take pride in carrying handguns. What's your little gun going to do when an IED, IED explodes spraying shrapnel faster than sound? So they're now um, demonizing the Second Amendment. Oh, they're total the cowards. And, the and exactly. And our government's going to say, roll over, give your rights up when we get attacked. When we get attacked by their ISIS slobs, uh, we're going to hold our traitorous government accountable. We're putting the narrative out now, and we've been doing it for four years. So when your jihad force globalist hits America and the Europe, you're going to get the blame. You hear that, Obama? You hear that, Henry Kissinger? You hear that, all of you? Northcom, Southcom, you're going to get the blame. Intelligence community, please explain how a Subway restaurant worker has her Twitter and Facebook accounts immediately shut down after supporting the heinous murder of two police officers in Mississippi, but ISIS member accounts are allowed to stay online to threaten the global populace at will. John Bound, Infowars.com. Late last month, world-renowned physicist Stephen Hawking appeared before the Sydney Opera House via hologram from his office back in the University of Cambridge in Britain and basically told the audience there that, that the human race has about a thousand years left. In fact, here's his actual quotes. He said, we must continue to go into space for the future of humanity. I don't think we will survive another thousand years without escaping beyond our fragile planet. And he was trying to appeal to people to get more into science and to look at these other problems that will occur when we try to go off world. And let's start thinking about them now. So when it's time to go off world, we can do it. We have a rather ambivalent attitude to science at present. We have come to expect a steady increase in the standard of living that science and technology have brought. But people distrust science because they don't understand it or feel they can control it. Well, Alex Jones had a rebuttal. He came back with a video titled, The Ultimate Threat to Humanity is Looking at Us in the Mirror. And he put this out the day after Hawking made his 1,000 year announcement. And Alex was a lot more pessimistic. He says, we don't have a thousand years if we don't get this right. We're going to have about 50. In fact, here's a little bit from Alex's piece, and I'm actually going to put the entire link down here at the bottom so you can go watch it. It's a great piece. It's one of those awesome crossroad pieces that Alex does, um, you know, kind of an open letter to humanity. So here it is. 
The safest thing to do is to launch space colonies. The safest thing to do is colonize the moon and Mars. The safest thing to do is to create diversity of human ecosystems and terraform nearby planets. Plus, that is the classic human activity is exploration, is discovery. We are at an embryonic phase. I hope we don't abort our species before we actually get out of the womb. We should love our mother. We should take care of the earth, but we should realize that we must transcend the technocracy that is attempting to play God if we're going to make it to the next level. Stephen Hawking wanted to be safe when he said a thousand years. I'll guarantee you if he was probed deeper, he would agree it's more like 50. Well, apparently Stephen Hawking is a fan of Alex Jones because he just came out at the Zeitgeist 2015 conference in London and had this to say. From Daily Mail, our robot overlords will take over in 100 years. Stephen Hawking warns computers could control humans within a century. Basically, he's talking about a robot uprising that he thinks will occur if we don't contain artificial intelligence. Computers will overtake humans with AI at some point within the next 100 years, he said, according to a report in Tech World. When that happens, we need to make sure that computers have goals aligned with ours. Our future is a race between the growing power of technology and the wisdom with which we use it. And he's not the only one to say this. Elon Musk has come out and said we need to be very wary of AI. Steve Wozniak, the co-creator of the Apple Computer Company, has said there's a future and it's with robots and it's not designed for us. And this is something we really have to start looking at and start talking about now before it gets to the point where the AI computers are taking over. We just played a clip earlier in the week of a Colonel Potosik, who's head of the Asymmetrical Warfare Group in uh, Fort AP Hill, talking about how they have autonomous robots walking around, acting as citizens or soldiers, however they are programmed. But when you talk about soldiers operating within an environment where they're civilians, one of the things we're looking at here at Fort AP Hill is a program of using autonomous robots. Essentially what we do is uh, we've taken a number of robots that can operate independently, walk up and down these streets. We can dress some up in uniforms, we can dress some up in civilians, clothes, and we can use that as a chance here at AP Hill to train our soldiers how to discriminate uh, between friendly forces, forces that may ev be evacuated. And that's just one of, those, uh, one of those great things that we're able to do at AP Hill. And by using the word autonomous, he means that they have their own kind of artificial intelligence. So this is already happening. And if you believe that the Boston Dynamic cheetah robots and the mule robots are what's out there, you're wrong. I mean, we, have, we are light years ahead of that right now, if you think that that is the cusp of technology. Uh, it's really, really disturbing of the future that may behold us if we don't really take a look at these questions and start asking the real hard questions and start holding our leaders accountable if AI goes out of control. Do we have anything in place at this point? We don't. But I think it's just really interesting that Stephen Hawking seems to be a listener of Alex Jones and he's come out and said, now, no, I don't mean a thousand years. We've now got a hundred years to get this right or we're doomed. You know, just think about a hundred years ago, 1915, what was going on? We had World War I, flight was just happening they were doing some aerial battles in flight but all this stuff was brand new there was no internet there was a lot of stuff that we didn't have that we now take for granted now we carry around our phones in our pockets and they're basically little supercomputers that track us everywhere we go so we have the cloud which we never had you know nobody even thought of the cloud 10 years ago now everything is uploaded to the cloud everything can be downloaded from the cloud and it's just a hacker's paradise so we have to start asking these questions now, especially about this AI technology. Are we going to let it rule us or are we going to rule it? And are we going to use it in the right way? Are we going to use it to help us get to places that we can only dream of now? So maybe in 100 years, we're not fighting with AI. We're working together with it to go to the stars, to build those space colonies, to mine asteroids, to do the things we were meant to do as humans. So you need to ask yourself these questions as well. And uh, please put what you think down in the comments below of this video. This has been Rob Dew for InfoWars.com and InfoWars Nightly News. If you enjoy reports like these, please consider becoming a member of PrisonPlanet.tv. It supports everything we do here. And your subscription can be used and shared with up to 20 people. So you can have 20 InfoWarriors on using your username and password on the system at the same time. It's a great way to spread the word, and it supports everything we do here. Thank you. So remember to look up at the stars and not down at your feet. Try to make sense of what you see and wonder about what makes the universe exist. Be curious. 
Well, it turns out that almost everything that the American public was told about the raid that killed Osama bin Laden was one big fat lie. And of course, this is something that we here at InfoWars have been saying from the very beginning, and that is the fact that the bin Laden raid was nothing more than political theater. It was designed to boost President Barack Hussein Obama's military credentials and keep those American flags waving in support of the war on terror, the never ending war sponsored by the military industrial complex. Up until now, most people who watch a lot of TV anyway, well, they bought the official version of the story hook, line and sinker. They believe that the Navy SEALs went into Pakistan. They raided the bin Laden compound got in a huge firefight and killed the world's most dangerous terrorist in a fierce battle. All of this, of course, under the watchful eye of the Obama administration, who watched the drama unfold live in real time from the Situation Room in the White House. We were then told by the Obama administration that bin Laden had been positively identified through a DNA test. I guess they had a a DNA lab test kit out there in the field. And then in accordance with Islamic burial rituals, he was buried at sea. And if you believe that, I, th I think you're spending way too much time in the matrix because this entire story is a bunch of BS. And I think the red flag for most of us critical thinkers, most of us conspiracy theorists, and that was when the administration was claiming that they buried Osama bin Laden's body at sea. I mean, that is ridiculous. To me, it sounds like something that maybe George Bush's handlers would have thought up, but not Barack Obama. He's usually a little more slick than that. And I can't help but thinking about, I don't know if you ever saw a comedian, Doug Stanhope. He's the one who said, we finally caught the Bigfoot of terrorist, yet nobody bothered to take a picture of him and they dumped his body into the ocean. I mean, think about it, it really doesn't make any sense. But this is what you're expected to believe, and unfortunately, much of the American public still buys what is being spoon-fed to them by their television sets, but slowly but surely, the truth is finally starting to come out. And now we've got Pulitzer Prize-winning investigative journalist Seymour Hirsch, who is very well-known and respected among mainline journalists anyway, well, he says that he has uncovered one of the biggest lies in modern American history and that the bin Laden raid was a work of fiction and that the Obama administration fabricated the story. I'm glad you finally caught up to us, Seymour. What took you so long? And as expected, you know, it didn't take very long for the mainstream media to send out their attack dogs against Seymour Hirsch. I mean, he's been viciously attacked, and there's a huge backlash on, uh, against him uh, for reporting on all this. But, you know, I got to hand it to the guy. He's really sticking to his guns. And his investigation has uncovered some very interesting facts about the bin Laden raid. I mean, why would there be this, what you're alleging is a massive conspiracy involving what would have to be dozens of people in three different countries that has sustained itself until now, what would be the motive for, for setting up this elaborate hoax? And you know, watching Anderson Cooper right there, you know, these mainstream guys are so predictable. They always ask the same questions. How could that many people have kept a secret? You know, somebody would have talked, that sort of thing. And then he follows it up with a, basically a direct punch to the face because he's insinuating next that by not believing the official narrative, that that somehow disrespects the troops. I mean, there are actual member, members of SEAL Team 6, Matt Bissonnette, Robert Neal, who've gone public, have said that the raid did in fact happen, basically as the government said, their comrades put their lives at risk, were shot at in the compound, right. there were bullet holes all over the place. Are you saying they're lying? Uh, I'm saying, I can tell you one thing, um, I don't know about O'Neill, and Neil said we went in thinking we were going to die, which I think is a great exaggeration, and Bissonnette, who also wrote the book, I think, No Easy Day or something like that, um, uh, certainly was not telling the truth about that. So there you go, Anderson Cooper asking all the, the same questions we've learned to expect from the mainstream media, especially from embedded CIA reporters. I mean, I tell you what, 
Operation Mockingbird was a success because the intelligence community is alive and well and embedded all up in the mainstream media. And if you look at the headlines across the country right now regarding Seymour Hirsch, you'll notice that they are using the C word again. Seymour Hirsch is now a conspiracy theorist. Of course he is. Now, I want to break down some of the bullet points of the Seymour Hirsch investigation. This from the Business Insider. And Hirsch says that the most blatant lie was that Pakistan's senior military officials, that they were never informed of the mission, uh, when in fact that they were part of it. Uh, he also says that the Obama administration claimed that bin Laden was hiding out in the compound, but Hirsch says that Pakistani intelligence agency had captured bin Laden way back uh, in 2006, and they held him prisoner all of that time. I don't personally believe that. I think bin Laden had already been dead for some time. I mean, we have credible sources like veteran CIA officer Robert Baer and Dr. Steve Pachinik, among others, who we all believe that bin Laden died as early as 2001 or maybe 2002. But anyway, this is what they told Seymour Hirsch. And he's got a lot of courage, in my opinion, reporting on this. And I tell you what, the Obama administration is not very happy about this report. And once you know it, they are denying absolutely everything. Let's move on. The White House's claim that bin Laden was buried at sea is also a lie, according to Hirsch. He says that they shot him unarmed by himself, execution style, and then they dumped his body out of a helicopter into the mountains of Afghanistan. So there's a lot of different stories out there that don't add up, and I think it's safe to say that the Obama administration is lying about the entire event. I mean, this was political theater. It was an American propaganda campaign to get us all to support the war on terror, much like George W. Bush did in, in saving Private Jessica Lynch or the... Uh, the tragic death of Pat Tillman, I think that they sandbagged the death of bin Laden for just for Obama. And now America has a new boogeyman, ISIS, yet another Frankenstein created, funded, and supported by the CIA. Of course, we've reported on the number of accidental weapons drops to ISIS. And now we know that something like 75% of all the weapons obtained by ISIS actually comes directly from the United States. If you think about it, we could actually defeat ISIS with a weapons embargo. But then again, you can't make any money on an embargo, now can you? All right, we're going to cut this segment short because I understand we have an urgent phone call right now from Admiral Akbar of the Rebel Alliance. Admiral, thanks for joining us. You know, we were just talking about the internet kill switch and Barack Obama, you know, he just said that he thinks we should hand power of the internet over to the federal government. I think that sounds like a scary thought. And Obama says it will be used fairly and distributed equally. What do you say to that? It's a trap. What happened? Do we just, do we lose them? 